Welcome to another Foldit Lab Report. I am BKEP here at the Institute for Protein Design with my colleague Ian H. If this is your first time tuning in, we produce these videos on the first of every month to tell you more about the science behind Foldit. This month, we launched the new trim tool in Foldit. This tool allows you to focus in on one region of a protein while ignoring the rest. It's going to be especially useful for large proteins. The trim tool is really simple to use. You just select the residues you wanna focus on. I like to use control shift and click and drag to select a sphere of residues. And then you click the trim tool icon. The rest of your solution will temporarily vanish off the screen and it's effectively ignored in all folded calculations. As long as the trim tool is on, Foldit can't see those missing residues. Importantly, this will affect your Foldit score, since the game will not calculate energies for the invisible regions of your solution. But this will speed up the game a lot, since Foldit can skip these intense calculations that normally bog things down. When you're ready, click the trim icon again to restore your full solution. This will also restore your true overall score. This simple new feature is actually a big deal for Foldit and will allow us to tackle bigger scientific problems, literally. See, ever since Foldit was launched in 2008, we've been limited to proteins of 150, maybe 200 residues max. Anything more than that and the game performance slows to a crawl. Even a simple wiggle or a shake becomes frustratingly slow. Of course, the problem is that most proteins are way bigger than this, meaning that we could only use Foldit to work on a small number of scientific problems. Take the protein collagen, for example. It's the most abundant protein in the human body. Each protein contains 3,000 residues. Or the largest protein in the body, Titan, has over 30,000 residues. Even the coronavirus spike protein, which we've seen before in binder design puzzles, is pretty massive. Each spike molecule contains over 3,000 residues. Being able to manipulate large proteins in Foldit will expand the types of puzzles that we can work on. And we are especially excited about how this is going to impact electron density puzzles. We already know that Foldit players are really good at folding proteins into electron density data. We've published two papers about it. This is a task that can be tedious and difficult for a single professional scientist working alone. We think that Foldit players can make a big difference in the scientific community by folding proteins into electron density maps. Of course, the problem is that most electron density maps are for big proteins, sometimes with more than a thousand amino acids. Over the coming months, we'll be ramping up to some monster folded puzzles. The challenge being to fold hundreds of residues into bigger and bigger electron density maps. As always, a big thanks goes to our dev prep players who helped us test the trim tool in advance of the launch. If you'd like to help the Foldit team test new features with developer preview updates, it's easy to switch your Foldit install to DevPrev mode. There are excellent instructions on the Foldit wiki, and you can find the link in the video description below. In this month's puzzle updates, we have ongoing projects in some metric design. We are trying to design a protein that can assemble with multiple copies of itself. And eventually these could self-organize into large protein-based materials. We also have binder design puzzles where we are designing proteins that can bind to protein targets like CD22 to modulate the immune system and treat diseases. And last, we have continuing small molecule design puzzles where we are trying to design a drug compound that can bind to a protein target. And that brings us to this month's design of the month. We have a design this month from puzzle 2141, which is a CD22 binder design puzzle. And the solution is from WBARM1234. Our friend BARM has designed a three helix bundle for the CD22 target. I like to look at all my solutions in the protein design view preset. This lets me see all the hydrogen bonds and the blue and red side chain atoms, polar side chain atoms that need to make hydrogen bonds. Um, so we see right off the bat, we have a strong core full of orange hydrophobic side chains and the outside of our binder is sprinkled with blue hydrophilic and polar side chains. And that's good, that should help this protein fold up correctly and remain soluble so that it can reach the target. Um, at the interface, we have a few 
hydrophobic contacts. I see a leucine here, and this phenylalanine will make some nice contacts. Um, for the most part, this binding interface is pretty polar, and that makes sense because the CD22 target is very polar. And that makes this a difficult target because all of those polar atoms on the surface need to make hydrogen bonds or else they become buns, buried unsatisfied polar atoms. And this solution is very good about satisfying buns. Um, we see actually there are only six buried unsats in this whole solution, which is impressive for this uh, such a polar target. Um, and in fact, what I want to focus on in this solution is that W Barm has made some excellent hydrogen bonds in the core with backbone atoms. Um, we need to remember that not only side chains have polar atoms, these red oxygens and blue nitrogens, but the protein backbone has polar atoms all along its length. Normally, these make hydrogen bonds in alpha helices and beta sheets, um, but in loop structures like this loop sticking up in the middle of the CD22 target, there are a couple of these exposed polar atoms that need to make hydrogen bonds. And W. Barm has placed a very nice threonine and serine right in the core of his binder, or in the core of the interface, I should say, to make hydrogen bonds with these buried polar atoms. And this is great. This is excellent. Um, if we had not made hydrogen bonds to these polar atoms, they would become buns, and they would be very disfavorable for binding. There are a few other buried unsats in the solution, which might cause some problems. There's another backbone one right here I see. Um, and this tryptophan, which is buried deep in the binding pocket, that could be a problem. Um, but for the most part, I do like to see such attention paid to satisfying hydrogen bonds. One thing I will say about the solution is that the backbone of the binder is very close to the target. And it is so close, in fact, that there are two glycine residues, it looks like, in this helix. And normally we don't like to see glycines and helices. Glycines usually like to form loops. And I'm afraid that the glycines in these helices could cause problems for the folding of our binder. Um, and in fact, that seems to be the only problem with our binder is that its alpha fold confidence is only around 70%. Um, so this three helix bundle, while it does seem to make an excellent binding interface, may have some difficulty folding, and that could interfere with the overall binding of this protein. Thanks again to W. Barm for sharing the solution with scientists. We might not have found it otherwise. As a reminder, we love for all players to share your favorite solutions with scientists, regardless of how they rank and score on the Folded leaderboards. That's all we have for this month. As always, thanks for watching, thanks for playing, and we'll see you next time.